Hey everybody, welcome back. The LifeBo 4 battery is top balanced. I've load tested it. It's in its final assembly state and it's moving day. The question is, is this battery going to fit inside of this case? If we can successfully make that battery fit inside of this space in the case, it'll be time to start talking about how to wire everything back together. We'll spend a good amount of time today talking about the wiring schematic for this new configuration. All right, let's get to work taking everything out of this case that doesn't need to be there to make way for the new lithium iron phosphate battery. We're going to be very careful to label all these wires to make sure that everything is clearly identifiable so that when we reconfigure and rewire this case, we're not wasting time sorting out what wires belong to which different appliances. As you can see, we've removed the wiring and the previous two AGM batteries, and many people over the years have asked how I have stabilized the batteries in place, and you can clearly see this H structure that I've described in the past is simply a couple of pieces of wood, and then the piece of blackboard material connected them across the middle. The prior two batteries would have set on either side. Looking at uh, how this new LifePo battery is going to fit. I've decided I'm going to slide this deck all the way to the far end and then set the battery to one side. That gives me more room to take care of some of the wiring on some of the switches on one end of the case. Uh, so that is our plan in uh, just a bit. We'll see how things fit as far as the battery is uh, concerned as it nests up against the framing and the piece of blackboard material. Uh, we'll also be taking some foam and on this far end wedging a couple of blocks of foam on either side to create some pressure to further stabilize the battery in this space. As you can see I've managed to fit this new lithium iron phosphate battery into the case. 
Uh, it's sandwiched in between those two pieces of wood that are on either side of it. There'll be two pieces of foam to further uh, block that into place to keep the battery from moving laterally. You can also see that I've replaced the blackboard material that I'm using as my lower deck on which multiple bus bars will be installed. There'll be two new bus bars. I'm installing a main positive and a main negative bus bar. We'll be reusing the load bus bar that I previously had installed. Uh, the loads will be served by the solar charge controller directly in this new configuration. So let's talk about how we're going to wire this new battery into the system, having removed all of the previous wiring in preparation for this new configuration. Uh, the starting point is to bring some energy into the system. So here's the representation of the external solar panel that's on the uh, top of the bimini of my boat. There are 12 AWG uh, positive and negative ready-made solar cables that uh, have the appropriate MC4 connections that connect to an MC4 input plate that's on the outside of the case. Those positive and negative cables uh, continue on. There is a 20 amp inline fuse on the positive side before they are connected to the PV photovoltaic input on the solar charge controller. The energy is then managed appropriate with the battery chemistry and the charge profile we set up and the power leaves the solar charge controller through these two terminals that are labeled battery. Uh, there's a negative and a positive. The negative will go to a new uh, common bus bar, a main bus bar, uh, that is going to be established in the new configuration. The positive will travel out and into a switch which turns on and off that solar charge controller. Um, the positive comes out of that switch. It continues through a 20 amp fuse and connects to the new positive bus bar. You can see that that positive bus bar gets its uh, positive uh, energy coming from the most positive terminal on the battery. This is an 8 AWG size uh, wire and it passes through that 50 amp ANL fuse uh, because this essentially uh, is also passing power eventually to the um, 400 watt pure sine wave inverter. So let's talk about again how the power from the solar charge controller uh, comes into the new battery. There is a battery management system, and you'll see the P negative terminal. This is a common port BMS, meaning that uh, power comes into and out of the same port. This is labeled P negative. That P negative uh, line is attached directly to a 150 amp breaker that is also connected again to that, um, that main negative bus bar uh, to which the solar charge controller is connected. So that's how the power comes into the battery. The power is coming into the battery, uh, being managed by the battery management system, obviously. Let's just talk about that in a little bit more detail. There's a battery negative uh, connection that attaches to the most negative terminal on the battery. And this configuration isn't identical to the way my BMS is set up, but you can see also these balancing leads and it's very important to pay close attention to those to make sure that they are connected to the correct cell. They are cell specific. There are four red leads positive going to the positive leads of cell number one, two, three, and four and your negative lead from that battery management system uh, from the balancing lead connection goes to the most negative battery terminal. So we've got power into the battery uh, let's continue talking now about how it is distributed. Uh, we mentioned that 400 watt pure sine wave inverter that is original to my design. Uh, you'll see there that uh, as far as bringing DC power into the inverter, you've got a negative 8AWG that connects over here to this main negative bus bar. And back to that positive, uh, the positive line is going into that main inverter power switch on the back of the case that will turn on and off the inverter without having to open the top of the case. Uh, but again, it's getting its power from that new positive bus bar uh, that we are installing. Looking at other potentials for delivering power, um, the AC power, without getting into great detail, 
uh, leaves the inverter. There are connections that are 14 AWG, the positive running through a 15 amp uh, inline fuse. And that goes into my um, 15 amp, 125 volt uh, duplex GFCI outlet. Um, there are connections uh, made internally that provide power to the AC voltmeter, the ammeter, with the LCD backlit feature. And there are a couple of lines that come from that that are connected to this current transformer. You wrap the positive um, AC uh, wire coming from the inverter around that donut-shaped uh, current transformer, and that is how the ammeter reads the power that is is passing uh, through this, this positive line coming from the inverter. You've seen the very large 2000 watt inverter that I intend to use. That's going to be external. It'll probably sit up on top of the case. I'll uh, find some way to attach that for use when we need the highest draw. Uh, for example, we're using that uh, induction cooktop. The post and the terminal on the outside of the case are for those larger loads. The uh, 2000 watt Renogy pure sine wave inverter will be connected to the positive and negative bulkhead terminals that are on the outside of the case. So the power is coming from the positive side of the battery direct to this post. Uh, the negative side, and these are coming through two AWG wires uh, for both terminals. Um, the negative is attached directly to that 150 amp breaker. So that is the maximum I'd be drawing uh, coming from the battery. The uh, BMS I have is maxed out at 150 amps, so the, the battery will never be able to deliver more than 150 amps total to any appliance, and that is uh, at the top end of what that uh, 2000 watt inverter would draw. There are two short jumpers that are attached uh, to the posts on the outside in the event that this would be used uh, to jump uh, the boat motor or anything else, uh, that's possible. I'm not um, of the opinion quite yet that that's advisable with lithium ion uh, or lithium iron phosphate chemistries, but nonetheless that feature still exists. To deliver DC power, we are still going to use uh, this pair of bus bars for DC loads. I'm going to take my DC loads other than the load from the pure sine wave inverter and from the external inverter directly from the load out on the solar charge controller. So you'll see a negative line coming out. These are 14 AWG wires going to the um, negative bus bar of what we'll call the load bus bar. And there's a positive that comes out, and, and that's coming out of the solar charge controller and goes directly to the positive bus bar. Connected to that positive bus bar, you're going to find that the entire string of the temperature sensor, that's a 12-volt DC temperature sensor uh, that reads in Fahrenheit degrees, a switch, the snap disc, which will sense the temperature inside the case and automatically uh, turn on these 12 volt DC fans. These are daisy chained together uh, and the positive goes to the load. Uh, the negative, again, daisy chained here as well uh, through the switch, the temperature um, sensor and the, um, the temperature indicator. Uh, attaching to each of the two 12 volt fans and that negative goes simply to the negative um, load terminal over here on this bus bar. On the front of the case you've got DC 12 volt outlets, you've got the uh, USB ports. So what's going on here is again um, the negatives are daisy chained together except for the 12 volt outlet. That 12 volt outlet here has a direct negative connection to the bus bar and a direct positive with a 10 amp fuse in it to the positive bus bar. Again, that's um, being served by the load out on the solar charge controller. Uh, the reason that is not connected with the other uh, features and through the switch is that the only time this 12 volt outlet is active is if you plug a socketed 12 volt appliance into it. So it's never in the on position uh, unless something is plugged in and uh, it's drawing energy. So the switch, the positive from the switch, attaches through a 3 amp um, 
inline fuse, again, 14 AWG wire size into the positive uh, load terminals here on this bus bar. And there is another um, a positive accessory uh, that then connects the uh, DC 12 volt meter and then um, comes over here to the USB ports and provides the 12 volt positive uh, connection. Uh, so that essentially is uh, how this works. Um, again, as it's laid out, it may not look exactly how uh, it will look when I get into the case because that uh, is where the artistry comes into play. You've got to be a planner and be willing to uh, be flexible and try different configurations within limited space to make things fit properly. But uh, how this is shown on this diagram uh, is how it will actually be wired, but it just may look a little bit different than the end result. One thing I can tell you for sure is that when I planned this out um, and the way I configured the uh, lithium iron phosphate battery uh, pack, I can tell you right now that in my case, the most positive terminal and the most negative terminal are actually on this side of the case. So um, that is not exactly how it looks, but I can tell you that the, the wiring really wouldn't change at all. So uh, that brings us up to speed on bringing the battery into the case. And now we begin the, uh, the real fun of uh, rewiring the case and making the, the new connections to bring it back to life. Uh, in the next video, that's what you're going to see is hopefully a fully functional system uh, that is now um, outfitted with this um, 280 amp hour uh, LifePo 4 battery pack that offers a tremendous amount of additional energy uh, to serve the needs that we have on our boat. Thanks for joining me today as we successfully retrofitted this new battery pack inside the case. Stay with me, there's a lot more to come as we spend time rewiring it to make sure that everything works properly. As always, thanks for your views, thanks for your likes, and if you haven't already subscribed, please do so so you don't miss what's coming next.